Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thanks so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to bring you the best tips and tools for creating beautiful home decor on a budget. Today is the first video in my spring craft show series. I'm going to bring you four projects I'm making for this year's craft shows. first project I'm using some of these butter dishes from Dollar Tree along with some salt and pepper shakers some jute twine and some chalk paint so these butter dishes I found at some Dollar Trees others have a clear um, plastic one but these make really great little floral arrangements so what I'm doing is I'm gonna make four different colors I'm going to use my chalk paint to give one or two coats to each of these two pieces of the butter dish by itself it's a kind of a shiny plastic so i want to add some color but also a matte finish so here you can see i'm doing one set with my white waverly chalk paint one set i'm going to do with this pretty light blue that's called pool We're, this one did need at least two coats um, to cover up the shiny white and then we're also going to do one with the yellow called maize and one with lavender I have these little they're called little mushroom buttons um, they're wood I am painting also four of these for each of my sets in the same color as the base these will be little feet on our project now for each of these butter dishes I'm doing three salt shakers so um, I'm going to do one set of three that's white one set of three that is with celery the light sage one set with moss which is a darker green and one set with again that light blue color called pool now this is glass and the chalk paint does pretty well on it. I did do two coats of the chalk paint on each of the salt shakers and just make sure to let that dry really, really well between your coats so you're not pulling up your first coat when you do your second. So here's my color combinations with the butter dish and the three salt shaker bud vases that will go with each one. Now I decided for all the things that are not white, I wanted to just give a little bit more of a farmhouse rustic look. So I'm dry brushing white chalk paint on those three sets of bud vases and also those three butter dish sets. There you can see what it looks like and we're gonna just do that to all of those salt shakers and the butter dishes as well. It gives it a little bit more character and just adds to that farmhouse look. Now for the three that are white, the three salt shakers that are white and also the butter dish that's white, I'm using the dark brown chalk paint called Truffle to add my dry brushing um, to those white pieces. Now after the salt shakers were dry, I did spray them with a clear matte spray paint just to make sure the paint didn't chip. And then I'm taking some jute twine and wrapping it there around the top part of each of the salt shakers. Now that the little feet are dry, I'm gonna go ahead and glue those onto the bottom of the flat part of the butter dish. I did also spray both pieces of the butter dishes with the matte clear spray as well. I just don't want any of the paint chipping off and I want this to be a nice finished product for my craft show that someone could buy and give as a gift. I did hot glue the top part of the butter dish upside down as you can see there to the base so those pieces are all connected and then the three salt shakers will just set inside here. 
And again, here's the four combinations of butter dish and salt shakers. And now comes the fun part of getting to add the floral and the greenery. And here you can see the white set and then also the maize yellow with the pool blue salt shaker vases. And then on the left, the lavender base with celery salt shakers and then the pool blue base with moss salt shakers. I just love how these all turned out. I will also say the greenery or florals that are sitting on the base there are not glued on. I just put those there um, this is how I'll, I'll display them. You can also see I wrapped some jute twine around the three vases and also added a jute twine bow. So these probably had about $3 into them and I'll sell them for about 12. Next I'm using three of these hanging signs with the wood beads and some poster letters and chalk paint. This is just a very simple upgrade on these signs. I loved when I was able to find these and every once in a while I'll see them again that they have that wood bead handle on them. So this front side has a texture to it. So this is actually going to be the back. I'm gonna flip this around and this will be the back of the project. So I'm using my ink or black chalk paint just to completely cover the wording there on the front and give a nice finished look to what will be the back of the project. Now this is the back and it's a nice smooth surface. So I think the stickers will adhere better but I don't want it to be brown, so I'm gonna give it a coat or two of my white chalk paint just to make sure it has a nice, solid, smooth background for the stickers. Now, these are the poster stickers from Dollar Tree. The sheet, unfortunately, only has one H, so yes, I did need to use a full, um, or at least purchase a full sheet for each of these signs. Um, but I wanted to just make a few of these for my craft show. So the stickers cost a dollar, the hanging sign itself costs a dollar, so that's two dollars plus the paint, and I'm probably going to sell these for five or six dollars at my craft show. So there I'm just arranging the letters. I've seen this type of sign all over the place, um, and then just to make sure the stickers stay on, just put one thin coat of our matte finish Mod Podge over the top to seal everything down. Once that's dry, you can just go ahead and pop it back into the frame. There you see you've got that nice black on the back, just gives it a nice finished look. And here is our finished product. I did make three of these, so hopefully I will sell all three at my craft shows. I have two craft shows, one on April 24th and one on May 1st.
For the third project, I'm using some six by eight wrapped canvases, some tumbling tower blocks, and some mini clothespins, along with these sets of prayer cards from Dollar Tree. So what we're making is a stand to display one of the prayer cards at a time. And for each one, you need two of these six by eight canvases. So using my little fingertip craft knife here, the easiest way to remove the canvas in one large piece to be able to use for future project is to do what you see me doing here. I'm cutting on the outside of the staples all the way around the four sides, and then you should be able to simply peel the canvas off in one large piece. You might have to work the corners a little bit, but you should be able to get it off to be able to save for another project. Then what you're gonna need to do is kind of peel off the little strips there that are being held down by the staples. And the hardest part of this whole project is removing the staples from the frames here. You do wanna take them off so that you have a nice flat surface to glue the two wood rectangle frames to each other. So I'm just using a flathead screwdriver to pry them up a little bit and then some pliers to remove them. And then I did give my wood frames here a nice uh, quick sanding with my hand sander. Finding two that match each other, size and shape, you'd be surprised that they can be different. I'm gonna take some of my super glue, wood glue from Dollar Tree, and glue these two together, um, staple hole sides on the inside. So we don't wanna see those anymore. So once you get those all nice and lined up, wipe away a little bit of glue and let that dry. Each of our stands will need 15 tumbling tower blocks for the base. So here I'm putting sets of three together. You guys know when I make anything with the tumbling tower blocks, I like to glue small groups together. And then once those are dry, glue them together in the bigger sets. So five sets of three, gluing those together. And then we'll go ahead and glue those sets all together to make four bases here like this. I actually am gonna end up making a fifth one, but for right now you can see I'm just taking those five sets of three and gluing them together with the wood glue. So we're making five sets. We're gonna do two sets that are white, one set that's black, and two sets that are the antique wax dark stain look. So these are all dry now, and I did give them a light sanding with my hand sander, and then we are just painting every surface, letting it dry, and then of course with the antique wax is an extra step. You are gonna brush it on, and then wipe away the excess with the paper towel to show that beautiful um, wood grain look with a stained effect. And here now you can see the prayer cards that I've matched up with each of the stand colors. There, That one had brown in it, so I did the dark stain, and that one has white in the florals. So just now to attach our uh, frames here, our rectangular frame, to our base that we made out of tumbling tower blocks, I'm using a combination of that wood glue and also some hot glue to attach this now to the center of our tumbling tower um, base there. And so there you can see those cards have some black, so they match the black frame. And then these two are gonna have the antique wax. They have some brown in the cards there. And then these other cards will match the white frame. So I have three dollars into this project with the prayer cards and the two canvas frames along with some tumbling tower blocks and some other random pieces so i haven't quite decided i will probably price this at at least ten dollars um 
yeah, probably at $10 since it didn't take a ton, ton, ton of work, but it did have some supplies into it. So these are the three different color sets of the prayer cards and the stands. I did hot glue one of those little mini clothespins there you saw right in the middle, and that's how they can display the prayer cards on their desk or table or shelf. And our last project for this video is a cute little succulent barrel using clothespins and a recycled canned chicken can. So I just clipped these on the can to try to figure out how many I was going to need to go all the way around. It ends up I'm going to need 31 halves of a clothespin to go all the way around the can. So here I am just taking my clothespins apart. And then with those 31 halves, I decided to this time do like a watered down brown paint um, just to give a stained effect, but not have to try to rub the antique wax off. So just mixing up a watery brown paint here. We're going to brush all the sides of these clothespin halves and let them dry completely before we move on to our next step. Taking some floral foam, you can see I just took the can here and kind of pressed it down to get the piece to fit inside, or you could just cut a square. Using my little scraper here from Dollar Tree, I am kind of cutting away the excess of the foam, and I'm also going to cut that little bit that's kind of sticking up. Do you guys notice my Ladybug vacuum changed color? Yeah, my red one died. I burnt out the motor, so I got a little green beetle. Anyway, here I am trimming that uh, floral foam that's sticking up just so that it is flush with the top of the can. And just rubbing away any of that excess. And then now we will go ahead and start gluing our clothespin halves around our can. So just using a little bit of hot glue on those three spots. I'm lining them up on the side of the can there. And because that one little indent, they're really easy to get straight and line up by doing that. All right, so next, taking some floral moss, putting some hot glue on top of the floral foam, and then just a little bit of moss just to cover up that floral foam. And then you can add your succulents to your little barrel here. If you enjoy budget home decor videos and are new to my channel, or maybe you just haven't hit that subscribe button yet, I hope you will go ahead and stick around by hitting that subscribe button and also tap that bell and choose all so that YouTube will notify you whenever I upload new content. The last thing I'm going to add to our little barrel here is some of this green jute twine from Dollar Tree. Like I said, I used that little notch here in the clothespin to line them up. And so now I'm going to use that notch to fit this green jute twine in and just hot glue one strand all the way around just to kind of tie in the green of the succulents as well. Thanks again so much for joining me today on my channel. I hope you'll give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me to grow my channel. And please let me know in the comments, again, which of these was your favorite and how much you think they would sell for maybe where you live. Thanks so much. Bye.